We're going live, live, live. We're live. Hey, how's it going, everybody? Hey there. Hey, it's Bruce here with Traveling with Bruce. Welcome to my channel. Uh, welcome today's to today's live stream. Uh, today is February the 1st, 2018. Uh, January's gone. Like, come on. Uh, unbelievable. 31 days. Just like that. Uh, I'm still getting over Christmas. It's, I don't know about you guys. Unbelievable. Um, welcome to February. Super Bowl on Sunday. Hello, hello. Uh, should be a lot of fun. I'll tell you. Fantastic. Um, thank you for joining me today. If you're uh, a regular, you know what's going on. If you're not a regular, you don't know what's going on. And I'll tell you what's going on. Uh, <laughs> if you're not a regular and you're watching this broadcast for the first time, you're looking at Bruce, who's in Creston, British Columbia in Canada. I'm about three miles north of the uh, U.S. border. It's just the United States is right over there. Uh, I can see mountains over there. I can, I can see you guys. And, uh, well, you guys can see us, so it's cool. Uh, today's weather here in Creston, 35, 36 degrees. Um, cloudy, bit of sun, more cloud, but it's a melt fest. We had some snow overnight, ever so slight, going away all as well. Um, we're doing, uh, we're doing a video here in my living room. Uh, the lighting is God awful. Uh, you'll notice that this side of my face is sort of a, oh, a natural color from the, the outside world. And then over here, I got this bright, shiny light to kind of give me some highlight. That's why the shadows here, if I could only do, you know, I could do shadow puppets and stuff. Uh, but that's just the way it is. I'm a small YouTuber and what are you going to do? I started this channel in August, 2017. It's a travel about it's a it's a channel about traveling, and I love talking about uh, cruise ship vacations, getting on a cruise ship, taking a cruise. Uh, I've done videos of my cruises. I'm doing videos about how to be a smarter cruiser, and I'm doing these live streams uh, every day, Monday to Friday, 5 p.m. Eastern, and Saturdays at 2 Eastern, to talk about being a smarter cruiser and giving you tips and ideas and uh, sharing ideas with my followers. Because what's happening here? This is now the third week, fourth week of doing this. What, there's a pattern beginning to emerge. <laughs> there's a cast of characters that follow me almost every day, and they're, they're growing, <laughs> and they're great. And it's a bunch of my subscribers, of course, and then a bunch of new people show up who've never seen me before or are just thinking about subscribing, wondering what this guy's all about. And these folks are participating in my live chat. And uh, someone will post a question. I'll read the question from someone, and I'll throw it out there. I might have the answer on the spot or an answer that I think is appropriate. And then one of my uh, one of my fellow uh, watchers here starts kicking in with an answer to themselves. It's fantastic. So, any of you out there who are watching this uh, broadcast live, say hi. Type into your uh, to your computer or to your phone. Tell me where are you? Where are you located? Where are you watching me from? What country? What city? Town? State? Whatever. What's your high temperature going to be today? Uh, we're 36 degrees Fahrenheit here, about plus three, maybe plus two Celsius. Nothing much. And then we'll, 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 just, we'll just say hi. I have some, a couple of tidbits of information for you that I'll share with you today. And uh, I'll go from there. As far as my channel goes, uh, uh, as I said, it started in August of 2017. It's now coming up to five and a half months old. Uh, I'm a one-man show. Uh, this is the producer, director, janitor, everything. And, uh, and um, I had no subscribers, no followers. No, no, nothing. When I started this channel, I'd been researching for a year to think about becoming a YouTuber. I jumped in August the 12th, started posting videos of my trips that I've taken over the years, and they were glorified slideshows. <laughs> yeah, people like them. Uh, they're okay. Uh, and I slowly you know, got a little more confident in how to work a camera and how to talk on the thing and how to do the software editing and posting and learning all the things you have to learn to be a full-time YouTuber. And in October, I hit 10,000 views which made me monetized. And I started getting paid because ads were running in front of my uh, my videos or, or little banner ads would appear or whatever. And uh, I started getting uh, like a, like eight cents a day, seven cents, 12 cents, that kind of thing. Not a lot because I didn't have any views, didn't have very many subscribers. Uh, December 13th came around, I hit 100 subscribers. Uh, that was a breakthrough moment because the analytics computers at YouTube start to show off your channel a little bit more. If you're going to hit 100 subscribers, you're starting to show them that you're, you're kind of the real deal. Uh, at that point, it was up to you know almost 20,000 views, and that was climbing faster and faster, and that was showing YouTube that I was the real deal. I had 60, 70 videos already posted. That's showing them the real deal. Well, by the end of the year, I had 200 subscribers, over 100 videos uh, uh, posted, another analytical milestone, and uh, we're on a roll. 
and uh, then the, uh, the the bomb was dropped. <laughs> uh, YouTube announced on uh, what was it the 16th of January, uh, about two weeks ago. Surprise! We're changing the rules for monetization. If you want to still get paid from advertisers, you want to even have even having advertisements on your channel. Now, in order to even be considered to be monetized, <clears throat> you've got to prove to us that you're not just real; you're really real. And uh, we're trying to stamp out robot type channels and uh, and and you know ne'er do wells and just god awful content things and yeah, some real copyright infringers and all kinds of stuff great oh that's fantastic but the, here's the catch uh, you have to have four thousand hours of view time uh from february the 20th 2018 backwards in a calendar year if you have a, at least four thousand hours that's step one well uh, good news i got that i i did that last saturday on one of these live streams because you guys are watching and we're having a great time thank you so that was one the second one though is the trick i have to have a thousand subscribers not just me all youtubers we have to have a thousand subscribers by the 20th of February to be monetizable. We're under that, we're out, even though we're in, like right now I'm, I'm in, but I'll get kicked out, and then I have to reapply once I get back in again. And uh, I don't wanna do that. I wanna just get to 1,000 subscribers before the February the 20th date and not have to contend with this whole reapplication thing because I don't know how strenuous or how difficult or how uh, tedious it's going to be to, come, to become monetized with the new rules because they're gonna be much more stringent on stuff. And, Although I, I should have nothing to worry about. I have no strikes against me. I'm a, I run a clean show. No one seems to be complaining. Uh, you know, everything seems to be all right. Uh, so let's just hit a thousand subscribers, I say, and we'll be fine. Well, boy, I, I announced that uh, on the 16th, 17th of January. I brought out a video, told everybody what was going on, what's on my mind. <clears throat> and you folks started calling your friends, uh, emailing and texting and sharing my videos and tweeting about me and retweeting my tweets it's great i'm getting shared on social media platforms all over the place i've got new subscribers coming in from all over the place who are saying i heard about you someone told me about you i'm sharing your videos i'm going to tell my friends to watch you you're doing great stuff oh that's unbelievable this never happened to me before uh so yesterday uh when i went off the air on this broadcast i was at 456 subscribers uh i had gained i think another 18 or 20 the day before so you know 430 to 456 right now uh 486 subscribers <laughs> 30 30 today 30 since in 24 hours if i can do 30 a day i have nothing to worry about <laughs> i don't know if that'll happen I don't know if i can maintain that that's that's a record it's the most subscribers i've ever had joined my channel in a 24-hour period and something else happened last night uh i got off the air I usually sit down on my couch and I kind of work my title and I do put a thumbnail together for the video that you're watching now. For those of you who are watching this tonight, it's broadcast live and then I have to prepare some uh, some uh, titling for it and some descriptions for it, some tags for it. I have to do some homework. And then I get it posted. It takes about 30 minutes after I get off the air. Well, I'll tell you, right off the hop, uh, I'm sitting down on the couch watching my analytics and I'm working on my latest video here, yesterday's video. And the channel's just gone. This is just, just view after view after view. I hit 100 views in like an hour. I'm just going, that that uh, has only happened a couple times before. The next hour, I hit 130. Never happened before. Uh, then I hit 110, 100, 110. Never happened before. Unbelievable. The video I did yesterday has had more views than all of my live videos, except for one. And that one is two and a half weeks old. The one I did yesterday will be 24 hours old when I will be 24 hours old when I finish this broadcast. So it's a brand new chat video. It's just taking off, and the views are coming in. And 15 minutes ago, the UK lit up. <laughs> What's happening in the UK that I don't know about? Because 45 video views showed up in five minutes from the UK, but 15 minutes ago, who's doing that? Thank you. <laughs> it's fantastic. There's a whole bunch of people watching me from the UK out of nowhere. Now I am. Pop I'm not popular. My channel, number one viewing audience, the United States of America. Thank you, America. Number two audience, Canada. Thank you, Canada. I'm Canadian, of course. Number three audience has been the UK, and they're coming on. The, the views from the United Kingdom are coming on big time for my channel. I can't tell you why. I don't want to know. <laughs> so it's great. And so this channel is really catching steam. So I think yesterday we had... Um, a new record for views. I think I was over 1,700 views. I think today, the way today is going, it's just it has to stop. 
Um, I've set a record for seven in the morning, eight in the morning, nine in the morning, 10 in the morning. Every hour, this hour has been a record hour for that hour. And it's over 100 views almost every hour. I think I'm going to do over 2,000 views today. First time ever. Unbelievable. That's a sign. That's a real good sign. And I thank you, people. I can't, from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much. Let's keep it going and let's make it happen. So I will say hi to some folks who have kicked in here because I see a few are signing in. Uh, again, there's, it looks like there were 15 of us now on there. If you're watching me uh, from wherever you're at, just say hi. Tell me uh, to where are you located, uh, what town are you in, what state, uh, what's your high temperature today. Pamela Jordan's here. Hi, Pamela. Hi, Bruce. How are you today? <laughs> I'm great. <laughs> That's fantastic. Hey, Wes Morrison's here from Texas. How you doing, buddy? Uh, 75 degrees in, in uh, New Braunfels, Texas. Wes, you get great weather. I, I can't believe it. Every day you're telling me about your weather. It's great. Fantastic, man. That's awesome. Karen Lipson's here. Hey there. Are you cold enough? Uh, sorry, Karen. I'm not. Uh, she's saying here, uh, minus 24 below with the wind chill in Calgary uh, uh, Celsius. That's about, oh my, is that less than zero Fahrenheit? That's cold. That's really cold. Maybe minus 15 Fahrenheit. Uh, we're plus 36. Uh, no wind. Uh, sunny mainly. We're lucky. We're, I've got this marine layer from, the, from Seattle and Vancouver areas that sort of makes its way through us somehow. I don't know. But there's a line of mountains between me and Calgary, Alberta. There's winter over there. It's it's awful. Uh, Teresa McFarland's here. Hi, Teresa. Uh, uh, she's saying hi, Bruce. Minus seven today. And then uh, Teresa, wow, that's a that's cold, Karen. Teresa's talking about how cold it is for Karen. Doreen is here. Hi, Doreen. Hi, everybody. Rain plus two. Oh man, Doreen. <laughs> what can I say? Elizabeth Breen is here. I'm here. Probably about sixty-eight today. Beautiful. <laughs> I'll take that. You know, you know, Canadians. Uh, when we go on a holiday down to Phoenix in January uh, and it's 68 for the high, we can tell who the Americans are and we can tell who the, you know, who the locals are and we can tell who the Canadians are. Simple. The Canadians are wearing shorts playing golf. The Americans are wearing sweaters, have long pants on, mittens maybe, toques or hats, and having warm hot chocolate and, and <laughs> warm toddies. And they're not necessarily golfing. <laughs> I guess we're a hardier breed. We're kind of polar bears. What can I say? Uh, Richard Koromaski is here, 46 in Philly. Richard, how you doing, buddy? Uh, big, uh, big weekend for you. Oh, man, in Philly. It's going to be something this Sunday. Cross our fingers and hope for a great game for everybody. Wow, it's going to be something. There's there's uh, Philly lovers and New England haters and New England lovers and Philly haters. It's going to be crazy. Uh, what, a, what, a, what a game. It should be fun. Mirage 580 is here. Panama City, Florida, 63 Fahrenheit overcast. How you doing, Mirage 580? Welcome back. Fantastic. We got a good crew here, all, all of us joining us from all over the place. Um, if you've watched my video in the past, you've seen that I've had viewers from the UK. I've had them from Australia. They, they join from everywhere. You, you never know. Uh, Richard is saying, uh, did you see that a website, uh, um, red site, uh, what was this here? Uh, I can't figure this out. Did you see that a website, see, something for $17 will get you 200 YouTube viewers in two to three days. I'm not sure what that means. Bob O was here. Hey, B hey Bruce, 64 in, in Pen Pelham. Uh, is that Alabama? Roll Tide? Yeah, uh, that's got to be Roll Tide. Yeah, got to be. Mike Hamilton, Eagles Fly. Mike, how you doing, buddy? Uh, Bob, welcome. You're a first timer, I think. Uh, welcome to the channel. Fantastic. Richard, I don't know what you're talking about. Are you talking about someone's trying to sell uh, 200 views or something or uh, something like that? I'm not sure what, what you mean. I do know of um, uh, there's all kinds of um, oh, uh, social media promoters, I guess is the word I'm going to use, that sort of promise the world if you throw, throw money, they'll give you subscribers views followers you know whatever format you're on and uh, a lot of it is just bot activity it's, it's just robot activity and uh unsubstantiated people it, i just don't care for that nonsense but i don't need it I, i'm just growing organically from my own channel base paula k is saying hi bruce 40 here in hanover pa right on paula and <laughs> welcome back uh paul is my number two for, is the first person ever to contact me on one of my live streams when i figured out how to receive messages <clears throat> and uh I have another lady who crashed through X who might be joining us today. She might not. She's from Ottawa. She's my number one. She first saw me in vain trying to do a live stream a few weeks ago. It wasn't working. I couldn't figure out how to read the messages. And she was saying, hi, Bruce. I see you. How's it going? And my wife saw it on her computer while I was on the computer here. And oh, what a mess. Anyway, crash X number one, Paula number two. The rest of you are regulars. And I know it. There's some of you who are new. And I welcome you very much. Uh, Richard Kormaski. Sorry, two to 3,000 viewers for $17. Yeah. Um, this is the kind of stuff that I avoid like the plague because the, the analytics computers in YouTube, 
they can ferret out this stuff. They, they, they've got the artificial intelligence. They've got all the robotics. They know if a channel lights up for no reason, they, they know if a channel is lighting up with, uh, for no, uh, no uh, legitimacy. Uh, and they'll catch it, and they'll just reverse the views. Um, you know, there are there are guys out there, people out there, uh, groups, organizations uh, globally who try to game the system. They try to create a, and this is something that YouTube's trying to stop. They tried to create YouTube channels by the dozens, by the hundreds, thousands, and they're posting garbage uh, product, garbage uh, content. It might be, it might just be clips from from uh, you know America's funniest home videos or Ukrainian Ukraine funniest home videos or you know, uh, Armenia's funniest home videos, and, and they cut the sound, put some music on it, and then they just post this stuff uh, around the globe on YouTube, and they're just trying to catch viewers who think something, you know, watching a car crash or watching somebody fall off a bike is funny, and they grab all these views because people are out of curiosity, just want to see what's going on. And uh, because they have 10,000 subscribers or more, they become monetized, and they cross-channel they they cross uh, channel each other. They have like they have one monster channel, like one mother channel, and then they have 15 or 20 subsidiary channels under that one channel. And if each of those channels below gets 10, 15, 20,000 views in a month, you add it all together, you got a million views or 200,000 views or whatever the number is for the mother channel, and that's the one that gets paid advertising money. And uh, they're trying to score this, these dollars. Well, the YouTube computers have gotten pretty slick and pretty smart, and they also figure out what's copyrighted, what isn't, and they're quickly clamping down on that. And uh, these channels are just being kicked off the air. They're not even being they're not even being warned to be you know behave yourself. They're just, they're just they've stopped, ceased to exist. And uh, the next morning they, they log into their channels and 15 of those 30 channels are gone. Three days later, 15 more of those are gone. They're trying to create new ones all the time to keep it going. And YouTube is eliminating these bad actors uh, from from existence. It's something we don't talk about much because it's uh, we don't know any people personally that do that stuff. Uh, of course, I as an individual creator. What do I care what these guys do? I kind of care because it's, it tarnishes my YouTube, you know, family badly. Uh, but I'm so busy trying to do what I'm trying to do to promote my channel and, and engage with my audience. I don't have time to, you know, worry about that. But I, I'm not interested in buying views. I'm not interested in buying subscribers. Don't have to. The channel and the audience is so massive, so huge that, uh, you know, I'm just a tiniest little, little guy in, in a big, big pond right now. But there are some bad actors. There's no doubt about it. Uh, Steve Bartley is here. Steve, 33 degrees Fahrenheit in Greenlee, Colorado. Three inches of snow overnight. Snow overnight. Steve, welcome. Uh, I think you're a returner. Uh, welcome back. I'm sure I've seen you before. Welcome. Richard, uh, is, is smiley faces, no, sad faces. Richard Baum. Uh, Charlie Baum is here. Hi, Bruce. It's 52 degrees in Alex, Virginia today. We'll be going on grandeur of the seas in April. This will be my 10th cruise. Uh, it's in the 60s. Uh, in the 1960s, I went on the USS United States. Awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. That, of course, that ship is now parked in Philly. Uh, and it's, it's a, you know, let's be real. It's a, it's a shadow of its former self. It's just a hulk. It's been stripped of everything. Uh, so the hull is there, but nothing else. And uh, really, its days are numbered. It, it's going to the scrapyard. It, 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 there's nothing we can do with it. Um, unless somebody has 300 million, they want to sink into this ship which has nothing but 50s and 60s technology, th there's no way it's going to sail again. I, I can't see it. But anyway, it stands proud and tall and Philly. It still floats. It'll float for another 50 years. That's how good the hull is, but it's a sad sight, isn't it? We see pictures on the internet about it, and it's, uh, it's, it's, you know, it's too bad to see it in the condition it's in, but this is the real world. Uh, but hey, uh, what can I say? Charlie, welcome. Uh, welcome to my channel today. Uh, Steve Bartley says, uh, I and my father also wore shorts. <laughs> I can't it. Uh, Steve was saying, I and my father wear shorts year-round in Phoenix. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, there are those who wear shorts year-round in Phoenix. I I'll tell you, I used to own in, in, in my 30s, and this is 30 years ago, I had a sports card store for a while selling sports cards and comic books, and I hired like five or six young guys to, to work in my store. First two guys I hired were sort of nephews of mine. And then I hired uh, people that got to know them and got to know us. And they were all 18, 19, 20-year-old young guys. Today, they're in their 40s and they've got kids. <laughs> their lives are over. Anyway, in those days, my store manager uh, wore shorts year-round. In 25 below weather, he wore shorts. He had a winter jacket on. Of course, he had his mitts. He had his toque. But he wore shorts. Uh, and the guys would kid him all the time. But 
he's a polar bear and uh, nothing with Basil. What can I say? I don't know if he still wears shorts like that today anymore. I don't think his wife lets him get away with it. <laughs> Kevin, if you're watching, I'm just saying hi. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Richard, uh, thanks. Didn't know that. Oh, yeah. Hey, Richard, the information on these, you know, this YouTube thing is endless. Um, uh, Richard's saying here, uh, doing the new Panama Canal on the Caribbean Princess later this month, uh, it still has issues uh, and shorter and shorter port stays. That's interesting. Caribbean Princess later this month, it still has issues and shorter port stays. That's uh, that's interesting news about the uh, Caribbean Princess. Uh, I hope you have a great trip. I'm sure you will. Panama Canal, that, that should be fantastic. I have been watching, you know, I have been watching the sales, uh, you know, on vacations to go.com and it's rare that you can see a real deal going through the Panama Canal because, um, you know, with Carnival owning uh, Princess and Holland America and, and Cunard uh, and then Royal Caribbean owning, print, you know, Celebrity and Norwegian, uh, you know, with this line, you don't have 10 cruise lines battling for tourists or passengers to go through the uh, Panama Canal. What you have is three uh, mother corporations that have subsidiary lines offering cruises to go through the Panama Canal or in, in the Caribbean or in Mediterranean and so on. And for North American consumers like us, we don't have it like we had it 10 years ago when cruise lines were, were at each other's throats. You had Norwegian competing with Carnival, which was competing with Princess, which was competing with Holland America, which was competing with Royal Caribbean. They were all at each other's throat and they were, they were all independent entities. One didn't own the other. And so you, you would have in the span of say a, a week, out of Miami, maybe, or Fort Lauderdale, you'd have four ships going through the Panama Canal, ending up in LA or ending up in San Diego or San Francisco, you know, wherever. And as a consumer, you know, if you're East Coast based, you had the luxury of, of shopping around for, for these four different cruise lines for a deal for the Panama Canal. And, and you know, within the last three months to go, if, uh, you know, one of the, one of the ships had 30% vacancy left another one had 22 and the other two were in the 12 to 15 range there was a dogfight going on in the last month or two or three to fill those cabins up at any price get these people on board and at least they'll buy drinks and maybe they'll gamble a little bit you know we, we can get them other ways right uh because we got to fill the ship and so as consumers we used to get deals i mean there used to be deals for 500 bucks to get you from miami to los angeles I haven't seen anything like that anymore. I don't see, I rarely see cruises for under $1,000, even inside rooms through the Panama Canal. Um, like I said, Princess is owned by Carnival, and there's no way Carnival is ever going to have, in one couple of day period from, say, Florida, a Princess cruise ship going to LA, a Holland America going to LA, and a, uh, and a Cunard going to LA, let alone a, uh, let alone a, a, a Carnival ship. No way. Uh, they'll stagger those out one a week, maybe, and they'll do it that way. So that that's where the deals are gone. And Royal Caribbean is the only, you know, Royal Caribbean and Norwegian are fighting with Carnival, of course, for business. But again, these these other operators, they're smart. They know what they're doing. Like the airlines, there's only three of us. Why should we kill ourselves? Are we crazy? And so they uh, they stagger their ships, and they don't collude with each other. They just, they just see each other's schedules. And you can also figure out if you're a competitor to a cruise line. You just find out from the port authorities who's parked where. Every port uh, along the way there and back, you have to register your ship years in advance to reserve a slip, reserve a pier, pier space to un unload and reload your passengers. So Carnival can find out what uh, Celebrity is doing. And uh, uh, Norwegian can find out what Holland America is doing. Just contact the ports uh, in Cartagena or in uh, in uh, in uh, Panama or or in Mexico along these you know along these routes, and you can see the celebrity cruise ship so and so is going to be at this port and this port and this port. Well, guess what they're doing? They're doing a Panama cruise. <laughs> so the competition knows what the competition is doing, but they stagger themselves. And so for we as consumers, we have to be extra savvy and extra sharp to get deals. That's what I'm mentioning there. Uh, what do we got here? Uh, um, okay, Richard is also saying has generator issues with one of the screws. So one of the propellers. Uh, okay, so that's limiting its speed. And that means that it might get in later than it would like to into a port. And then it has to leave earlier to make up the time to get to the next port on time. That could be one of the issues. I think uh, uh, that's the ship I'm thinking about right now. It's Royal Caribbean. It's one of the monsters. Is it the allure of the seas or the oasis of the seas had um, propulsion issues? Uh, and they're going into dry dock. I think they're in dry dock right now. 
and they were replacing one of their azopods and they had same thing propulsion issues um what do we got mike mike is asking about what those issues were for caribbean princess that's what we're talking about mike it looks like a, a generator issue with one of the screws because of course you have diesel engines powering generators which generate electricity the engines work off of electricity and uh you, you get a, a break in the chain somewhere between the production of the energy and the delivering of the power maybe there if the propeller issue is the propeller is a problem it doesn't matter how much electricity you make the propeller's got the issues maybe it's a gearing issue who knows and uh, that'll affect it okay richard is also saying one engine can not make top speed it'll be a while before they take it back into dry dock yeah i think late 18 early 19 gave us a 50 dollars cabin credit for the ports being cut short yeah they're gonna they're gonna make it up to you somehow uh, that's all they can do um because the what they need uh specialized parts as you folks uh some of you are regulars you know this uh, newbies you may not know this um just yesterday i was announcing or mentioning that that uh, uh norwegian announced the name of a brand new ship called the encore and the encore is the fourth ship in a series of ships that have been built basically identically the bliss and uh, was it the breakaway i'm trying to remember there's four ships that are exactly the same size they'll have the same engine configuration same generator configuration um but it's only four so once the fourth ship is built and the shipyard has delivered the last one uh parts replacement parts for those four ships are very highly and very uh, highly specialized parts and if you're talking about a pro propeller type system there may be a set propeller that has set dimensions and set angles and set adjustments to it that's a one of a kind for just three or four princess ships and if that goes uh maybe the gearing connecting to it goes you have to get machined and, and ordered a year in advance a new replacement part for that issue that problem and that's why the dry dock date of the end of 2018 or into 2019 becomes incredibly important for this vessel because when the uh, the part is announced is ready when them when the mechanics or the the you know the shop that's making this you know replacement part when they tell princess you can have it in say november of this year we'll have it ready for you then and only then will princess commit that ship to a dry dock situation where they'll take it offline for two weeks or four weeks and they need time to take the old parts out and put the new parts in and refurbish the rest of the ship while you're at it and then do the sea trials to make sure it's up and running again so uh, you're talking millions tens of millions of dollars uh in cost every day a ship is in dry dock three million dollars is being spent on it on average this is not an average fix this is one of those outside not the box but it's kind of outside the norm for a refurbishment and this could be an extra 20 million bucks it's a serious problem there might be insurance on it there might not there might be warranty on it there might not i don't know but if it, it, it breaks it has to be replaced eventually uh what do we got here okay doreen is saying hi that's not good news for your crews now a oh, wow 50 onboard credit that is generous well yeah maybe it is maybe it isn't but it's 50 bucks uh charlie is saying it's the grandeur of the seas okay they extended the cruise two days repair on hydraulic on port van uh, okay yeah, Charlie, I think you're right. A grandeur of the seas is the one that was having the issues. I thought I think you're right regarding propulsion, and they were uh, they're in the dry dock. Charles uh, Charles Jordan's here, multitasking here, watching you and doing taxes. Oh, <laughs> uh, I hope this is the fun part of your deal. <laughs> uh, sorry to hear it, but you know it's got to be done. What can we say? Um, again, anyone who's joining in, uh, you never been here before. Tell us where you're watching us from. What's your high temperature going to be? You can kick in on the discussion anytime you want. Uh, I'm in Creston, British Columbia, Canada. It's about 36 degrees out today. I'm three miles north of the U.S. border. And I say hi and welcome to my channel, Traveling with Bruce. We're talking cruises. We're talking traveling. We're talking whatever. Uh, today's topic, to get to today's topic, uh, was from a, uh, the idea came from a, a viewer yesterday. And uh, we're going to talk about packing trips or packing tricks i should say tips for being a smart cruiser packing ideas what should you take on a cruise uh, beyond the obvious uh what should you bring along on your cruise that will you know take care of things and i i wrote down a couple of things that that uh that uh, i thought of and and i welcome your your uh, your ideas some of them are genius uh these one-off things that, that people could think of it's, it's just brilliant uh, a couple of things that I came up with was uh, <clears throat> number one, 
Uh, if you've never taken a cruise before, or if you have and 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 you've been lucky so far, and it hasn't, this hasn't happened to you yet, or it has happened to you, and and now this is the way to mitigate the problem. The issue could be that when you get to a ship like an Allure of the Seas or Harmony of the Seas, these big boys, four thousand, five thousand, fifty-five hundred passengers, uh, when you get to the pier, it's mayhem. Uh, it's complete chaos. There's trucks, cars, buses, people going all over the place. There's 5,000 people getting off the ship, and there are 5,000 people want to get on that ship over a four, six-hour window. It's crazy. Well, unlike an airline, an airport, you might have flights going all the time, but each plane holds 100, 150, 250 people, and the occasional A380 holds 400, 450, 500 people. But on a cruise ship, six hours, you have 10,000 guaranteed people coming and going, and it's crazy. Well, your bags, when you come to the cruise to get on your cruise, you're giving your bags over to the sky cabs right at the curb or right at the pier. They have a they have a little thing on there telling them telling you that they're with the cruise line that you're with. There's no other ship at that pier, so it's obvious that they're with that cruise line. <clears throat> and hopefully you've got bag tags that are assisting you with that. You hand them the, your luggage. You're not going to see it for a while. And uh, the luggage is going to get piled onto carts. The carts are going to be wheeled out to the port. The carts are then going to be loaded onto the ship. The carts are then going to be taken down the main hallway on deck three or deck two or deck one. And eventually, the crew on board, when they get all the carts on the ship with all the luggage, then they're going to start taking the luggage off those carts and sorting it by deck uh, number. And then the freight elevators take these elevator loads at the front of the ship, the middle of the ship, the back of the ship. Load after load of luggage goes up to various deck levels, and from there it gets sorted out to room numbers, and eventually you'll see a suitcase outside in the hallway in front of your room. The trick of it is you get on the ship at 10, 30, 11, 11, 30, 12 o'clock, uh, and you might not see your bags until 6 o'clock tonight, 7 o'clock tonight, 9 o'clock tonight. Then you're going to see your bags. What are you going to do in the first 7, 8, 9 hours you're on the ship? What you do is you take a carry-on, and it's uh, really important you do that. The carry-on has to contain all your valuables, your cameras, your computers, your tablets, your telephones, your, your jewelry, uh, anything that's uh, you know, precious to you that you're bringing along. Uh, if you've got, you know, you've got a pair of Jimmy Choo shoes that, you know, 1000 bucks a pair, put them in there. Uh, tip for the ladies. <laughs> the makeup, your makeup for the day. Uh, your meds, the medications that you're going to need for at least the next 24 hours. If you're on some kind of a doctor prescribed, you know, whatever, or it's, you know, it's cholesterol pills, or high blood pressure pills. So it's serious, maybe not life threatening serious, but serious. On your carry on, everything on your carry on, bathroom stuff that you need for the next 12, 48 hours in the carry on. Your bathing suit, your flip flops, uh, maybe a spare t shirt. Uh, that kind of thing. You may have to be prepared to wear what you're wearing on the on board for dinner tonight. You may have to wear this to dinner tonight because if that suitcase doesn't arrive and it's got your suit in it or it's got your favorite outfit on it, you might not be in. It might not arrive until 9:30 and you've already eaten. Okay, safety tips. Okay, so that's a big one and that covers a lot of sins and a lot of territory. I know, but it's one of the things you you have to really take care of. We have to think about. Okay. Um, just going to see if anyone else is talking about uh, this uh, idea. Doreen is saying packing cubes for sure. Packing cubes for sure. Uh, packing cubes. Packing cubes. Um, are you talking about the kind of cubes that hang on the back of the door? Or are you talking about that? They hold shoes and they hold items. Is that what you mean? Uh, or uh, I know I know it's something. Help me out, Doreen. Talk to me. Um, give me some more info. Um, Richard is saying not a tip, but a princess had – a luggage valet from Philly to Rome, Italy for $350 US and bags showed up in our cabin on cruise day. Not a tip, but a princess had a luggage valet from Philadelphia to Rome, Italy for 350 American and the bag showed up in our cabin on cruise day. Not sure what that means. Uh, that sounds really interesting. Elizabeth is saying clothespins for the shower clothesline. Yeah, I've heard this before. This is a good idea. Pure vitamin E oil for sunburns, water shoes, anything your kid likes at home. Bring stuffed animal, tablet, packing cubes always. Okay, those, those there's those packing cubes again. 
Uh, Elizabeth is saying, no, no, cubes to pack your clothes in. Oh, okay, okay. Just take them out of the suitcase and put them on the shelf. Mine are still packed from the last cruise. Well, there, there you go. Yes, what a great idea. Fantastic idea. Convenient, smart, uh, boy, space efficient. Way to go. And fast. Yes, uh, very good. Uh, I came up with something. Uh, take your binoculars. Don't forget your binoculars. Uh, those of you who've never thought of this, I, I, I've gone on cruises. I always take my binoculars with me. I bought them at, uh, oh, I think of it, here in Canada, we have an outfit called London Drugs uh, in the States, CVS and, and uh, Rite Aid. You know, you can buy the cheap electronics there and stuff. You can buy binoculars at Rite Aid Pharmacy. Get a pair of binoculars, like 50 bucks, that, that maybe have a zoom uh, or certainly are adjustable. The old-fashioned, you know, big ones. Because I'll tell you, if you're on a, <clears throat> I don't care what room you're in, you can be in an inside room. You can be in a balcony room. Makes no difference. You got your balcony. You get up to the top of the ship there on deck 15, or you go to the back of the ship where you go up to like deck 18, way up at the sports level. You can look out over the sea for miles. And uh, I've looked through binoculars, and I see the whales breaching near Cabo. You see the puff of air of water coming up through the through the air spout, and I see the whales, pump, you know, breaching the water. Um, I'll see other ships in the distance. I'll see land when when you can't see land through the naked eye, and I find it fascinating. I, I just I just love it. I just love being on a cruise ship and just looking around all the time. Every day it's different because you're in a different port. You, then you're moving between ports. Uh, sometimes you have a sea day in between. You know, in the middle of the cruise. Love having my binoculars. It just adds to the show. It really does. And it's also really cool when you're coming into a port or you're going out. Because you get to look back at the port you've just left, or you're coming into a port, you're still a couple miles out, and you can see, you know, the, the pier right in front of you, or you can see down the beach a ways. Take binoculars. Uh, cheap entertainment. <laughs> They'll keep you occupied for hours. You'll be glad you did. You brought them. And then when you do an onshore excursion with a, some kind of a tour, take your binoculars. They'll come in a carry-on, a little shoulder strap. And if you lose them, okay, you know, you lose them. If they were 50 bucks. They're 50 bucks, okay? It's not the end of the world, but boy, what a, what a difference to, to have this much zooming power for your for the naked eye. I know that people will like to use their camera for that kind of thing, where they'll use the camera to look, you know, and, and film at the same time, of course. Um, but binoculars are the kind of units that are big enough where you can put your elbows on the rail of a cruise ship, and then you're holding the binoculars really steady like this, and you're not getting that jiggly. Now, if you want to pay extra for a pair of binoculars with built-in stabilizers, those will cost you. They're available. They're out there. You can get those, but you know you don't necessarily have to have to do that. But yeah, pretty cool. Uh, and Doreen is saying, keep your suitcase neat and tidy, and you can pack more. Uh, that's you got that right. I mean, don't just throw stuff in there. Really pack it in. My wife was saying to me last night when I told her about the subject. She said, "Well, don't forget to mention about the shoes." I said, "The shoes? What about what about the shoes?" She said, "Well, you know, when you take your runners, you, you stuff your athletic socks in those things." Oh, yeah, because the shoes have air in them. There's, there's space in there. Rather than crush them and squish them, fill them up with your athletic socks so that they're all you know blown out. But that's all used space. There's no air in there, and your shoes won't get so crumpled. My leather walking shoes, put in the good socks, put them in there. I thought, oh, that's brilliant. It's my wife. Of course it's brilliant. Um, and then you know she does the same thing with her her walking shoes and that kind of thing. So uh, use any nook and cranny of space you can. Another tip that she told me was with pants. Uh, I still love that question the customer asked the other day that, that you know, I, I'm on a seven day holiday. How many pairs of pants do I need? I, I love that question. Uh, pants, her pants and my pants. What she does is she opens the suitcase up and on the bottom half of the suitcase, for example, she'll, she'll lay down the pants nice and flat, but only the top part of the pant will be in the uh, suitcase and the, the legging will hang out over the edge of the suitcase a foot two feet on the bed on the bed and then on the then she would layer another pair of pair, pair of pants down the opposite direction with the again the, the top of the pant inside the suitcase and the legs sticking out outside the suitcase two to two feet this side outside the suitcase on the bed and so the pants are just laying out like this and then she piles all the pairs of pants are done that way. One, 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 one. Then she puts all the clothing in the middle, all the tops and, and everything that she wants to put in the middle. And then she takes the pant leggings from the bed on this side, flips them all over on top, 
flips this side, pant leggings all over on this side, and you've got pants that are like that are doing this now, that are going all around your clothing like this. Okay, no creases. If you fold them in half and you lay them in the bottom of your suitcase and pile everything on top of them, you've got a crease down the middle of the pant because it's it's been pinched. Where here, there's no pinching. The whole pant is lying like that. I'm thinking, well, there you go. I, I, as you can see, I let her do the packing. <laughs> she tells me, what are you taking? I find what I want. I leave it on the bed, and then I'm kicked out. <laughs> but I, I will watch once again. But that's how she does it. Uh, I think it's brilliant. Um, <laughs> what do we got here? Uh, okay, making copies. Okay, okay, okay. Making sure, making sure uh, to make sure I'm up to speed on my memos. Forgive me, folks. I'm looking at all the messages that have come in. They're coming in fast and furious. Uh, cubes to pack. Keep your suitcase neat and tidy. You can pack more. Yes. Okay, Richard is saying you ship your luggage when you go overseas. This is explaining this, this deal. FedEx picks up the bags at home two to three weeks before the cruise, and it goes overseas. Great idea. You know, if you're taking uh, you're taking a cruise across the ocean and you're going to end up in Rome, as he was just explaining a minute ago, and, and your, your luggage is waiting for you in Rome in your hotel room, great. Um, but in the meantime, you need something on board the ship if it's a repositioning trip, of course. But if you're flying over, you send your luggage first, and then your luggage is waiting for you, and you're going on the airplane with a carry-on or two, you know, something like that. Not a bad idea. Uh, Karen is still confused about what a cube is. Um, uh, Doreen is saying, make copies of your passports. Mark the Lost Traveler is here. I love packing cubes, he says. Uh, so, so can we have people who love them, people who know what they are, some people who don't know what they are. I kind of think I know what they are, but I'm waiting for someone else to explain it a little better. <laughs> I also know there are YouTube videos on packing cubes. Uh, that for sure. Um, we'll get to the bottom of it. Steve Bartley, uh, a potpourri, the before you go spray. <laughs> Well said, sir. Well said, potpourri, the before you go spray. Ah, I love that. That is fantastic. Uh, <laughs> uh, Mark the Lost Traveler is saying, uh, I, I think he's saying, I hang or pack all my clothes. I can get the, uh, I can get the whole house in one bag. I can get the whole thing in one bag if you range roll everything. Uh, <laughs> I, I range her, the way he wrote it is interesting. I range her pack all my clothes. I can get the whole house in one bag if you range roll everything. Range roll. I'm not, I, I, you got me there, Mark. Uh, it, it's an expression I know. Probably most of you know what it is. I'm, I'm lost. Elizabeth, my husband is a truck driver in all 48 states, and he has taught me to roll all clothes also. Okay, it really gives you more room. So rolling your clothing. Yeah, and you you know certainly you can do that with with anything. Obviously, you can roll it up. It's a question of how you like it. I know with my my shirts, what I like to do is once uh, I know my wife also does this when she gets those pants in the suitcase where the leggings are still sticking out, the pant the shirt like my golf shirts, she'll fold them only in half, and she'll she'll put them in, in right in the middle of the suitcase, and uh, or 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 like one half suitcase this way, one and a half suitcase this way, and she'll just pile them up, pile them up, and then the leggings come over. And uh, the clothing, everything is down, low down. Uh, but there's only one crease to contend with, and that's the middle here. And once we're on a hanger, we air it out, and, and it seems to work. But it all depends on the material, I think. Um, Wes Morrison says, I've heard a couple of people packing a power strip to handle all the phones and tablets that you will bring. Yes, sir. Uh, that's a good point, Wes. Uh, that is definitely a recommended uh, thing. Because cruise ships from about five years ago and older, um, you know, what did we bring us with us that were electronics back 5, 10, 15 years ago? Uh, a charger for our shaver. Well, that was in the bathroom. And uh, uh, the women would bring uh, hair blowers. Well, they provide them now on cruise ships. Uh, hair curler, if you have your own favorite, you bring that. Well, there's the vanity area, usually in the cabin, for that with a plug, right? But the rooms would only have maybe a plug here and a plug there, not so many. So power strips are the way to go where you can plug in five or six different things at the same time <clears throat> you've got a charger for your iphone you got a charger for your tablet you got a charger for your computer you got a charger for your camera yeah uh, the electronics are just you know they're taking over we know uh you you got that one right Wes. absolutely good point doreen is saying pop-up hanger for dirty clothes pop-up hamper pop-up hamper for dirty clothes can't read yeah good good plan 
Um, I know in in my case, uh, because the, the clothing I wear is just not that valuable. I don't care about it. I don't. I do care about it, but I don't. You know, I don't cry about it so much. Um, and I'm a guy. You know, I'm a guy. Uh, every day or so, I'll grab the suitcase from under the bed, pull it out, lift the lid, throw the dirty clothes in, shove it back under the bed, <laughs> and then when it's time to leave, dump the suitcase out on the bed, <laughs> and then you know, my wife and I will. You know, I'll help fold the clothing and she'll, she'll pack it back up again. And we've got, you know, we're taking mainly dirty clothes, right? Cause we don't do laundry on the cruise, especially a one week cruise. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Uh, Elizabeth is saying also uh, we do the power strip and you can let the cruise line know you need an extension cord. If you have a, um, a machine, a CPAP machine, you can also bring a water for your CPAP, your C cruise CPAP. CPAP, help me with that one. Uh, but I, I, I'm not sure what you mean. But yes, uh, they'll bring an extension cord. Uh, just ask. Yeah, just ask. Uh, Mark the Lost Traveler, uh, uh, Google Pro Packing Cubes. They're the best. Okay. Angela A is saying, I use a Febreze car vent air freshener for the bathroom. Works well. Potpourri before you go. Yeah, that's, uh, that's uh, and that'll keep it fresh, uh, smelling fresh all the time. Great tip, Angela. Thank you. Mark the Last Traveler. Uh, no, no, no. Ranger Pack. Look it up. Okay. Ranger Pack. Look it up. Uh, DJ Wheels is here. DJ Wheels. Packing cubes are relatively small containers made of fabric, often in a rectangular shape, used for packing clothing. Thank you. Fantastic. He goes on to say they zip closed and are small enough that you can fit several into a carry-on bag, suitcase, or backpack. Great, great tip. Absolutely great tip. Love that. Mark the Lost Traveler, um, go on YouTube and, and put in how to range roll your clothes. That That's how the military does it. Okay, right on. Very good. Uh, Elizabeth is saying, I go to the Dollar Tree and buy one of uh, every medicine they have. Then I just really bring two or three of all meds. Uh, that way I have them if needed. Also, fee free fee breeze and a wrinkle release like downy. Yeah, really good point. Uh, uh, she, Elizabeth saying it's a machine that people use who snore a lot. Ah, but it had, but in this job, he has to have it. Okay. Right on. Good, good, good plan. Breathing machine. She's saying, uh, very important. This medic medication thing, uh, you touched on is another thing I wanted to bring up too. Um, of course you'll bring, uh, you know, sanitary wipes. We're, we're, we're beginning to hear about those. Uh, bring, bring a container of those because you want to wipe down anything that, you know, you're touching, uh, for, for germ relief and so on. Although your steward will do that every day anyway. Um, your meds. Uh, yeah, you got to bring your meds with you. Um, but I came up with another idea and that was um, the kind of meds that you find at home in your medicine chest, uh, like ibuprofen or aspirin or even and aspirin, uh, Tylenol, uh, band-aids, uh, ointment. If you cut yourself, scrape yourself, bring some ointment with you uh, for, for killing, ba killing bacteria. Uh, Q-tips, you know, you're not supposed to use them for the ears, but that's what they're they're designed for that, aren't they? Um, bring along everything you have at home that you don't want to pay unbelievable money for in the medical room in the in the uh, in the ship. If you if you scratch yourself and you're bleeding a little bit here, you want to have ointment with you that you can use yourself and band aids, your own band aids, and you can patch yourself up or have your travel companion do it for you, unless it's a you know a deep cut and you need stitches. Well, obviously you're going to need medical attention, of course, but uh, for scrapes and scratches and bruises and, and little things, you want to avoid having to buy one pill for 50 bucks because I've heard and read horror stories about medical expenses on cruise ships where, you know, the, the, uh, the uh, travel companion was saying, geez, uh, you know, uh, Charlie um, had a stroke and, uh, <clears throat> but you know he stabilized very quickly, and we got him into the medical room, and they gave him a, an aspirin, and they charged us fifty bucks. Yeah, if you have your own, you can see I've got aspirin. <laughs> That's, I'll save the fifty bucks, especially if you don't have travel insurance. And with travel insurance, you got to be careful because sometimes the deductions and the exemptions are so restrictive that you have travel insurance in name only, but not in a practical sense. So if you can bring along with you you know, the things you need, uh, like a, a medical scissors, a pair of good quality little scissors in a, in a first aid type kit, something tiny, a uh, good way to go. Uh, it's just common sense. And, uh, and if it's doable, way to go. Um, what we got here? Oh, okay. So, uh, Richard is saying I brought magnets, strong ones with hooks attached for long cruise kept, kept 
backpack, hats, camera, coats hung on a wall, drapes closed with them, worked great. I bet you they would. That's a great idea. Uh, smart move there. Uh, they're cheap and they're they're functional. Elizabeth is saying, I keep my packing cube packed all year long because we do cruise a lot. We usually do not have to use it, however. You are right. Uh, you need everything from a Band-Aid to a Q-tip to antacid. Yeah, that's another one. Bring your Tums. <laughs> you know, bring your antacid, your Tums. You're going to be eating food that you don't normally eat, or you're going to be eating food in quantities that you don't normally eat. And sometimes your eating times will be varied based on your activity on board or off board the ship, okay? Uh, think also about, um, like, you might get blisters walking around a lot because you're really active on this cruise. You know, you've, you've, you've decided we're going out every day on, a, on an excursion and, uh, you know, your shoes have let you down and you've got a blister. Make sure you have Band-Aids for that. Now, I will say that it is not like $100 to buy Band-Aids in the gift store uh, on board a cruise ship. It, it's nothing like that. And another thing to think of is if you've got to stop in, say, San Juan, Puerto Rico, or St. Thomas in the Caribbean, Cayman Islands, and you need band-aids, antacid, uh, you know, ointment or, or, or mouthwash or toothpaste, you'll find it on the island at a fair price. It won't be as cheap as Walmart at a super Walmart, no, but it'll be fairly, you will not be gouged to the moon like, say, you're in a hotel uh, lobby and there's the little store, or oh, you're at the airport, and the little store at the airport trying to sell you a tube of toothpaste for five bucks, you know, they're 99 cents at Walmart. You won't run into that issue on land. On the ship, you shouldn't either. I, I don't think so. But then again, you know, pack your toothpaste and pack your stuff, all this kind of stuff. I, I bring along Aura Gel, uh, a dental uh, um, to, in a little tube. Aura Gel is for sore teeth, sensitive teeth. You put a little dab on the end of your Q tip. And then you can put that on a tooth or between teeth if you've got a, a, a real sensitivity issue that just flares up on you. And then, of course, I love bringing my flo my dental floss stick, my little sticks. I bring those in. One side is a toothpick. The other side is a dental floss unit. I throw it away once you use it. Those are great. Uh, and then I, I try to avoid, obviously, uh, pray that I don't get a dental issue on board a cruise ship. I don't want that. So, yeah, little things like that. But uh, uh, the tube of... Uh, the tube of uh, painkiller is a good idea too. Um, let's see here. I keep packing my. Okay, so Mark Lost Traveler saying, my friend was uh, my friend was. Uh, okay, I'm trying to I'm trying to read this right. I'm having trouble reading this. My friend was came off a Norwegian. He, he had a friend who was on the uh, Norwegian getaway, and he said a total of twenty mi people missed the ship, in different ports because they were on cell phone time instead of ship time. Oh, that's a good point. Okay, I got it now. So 20 people missed the cruise, missed the ship home at the end of the day because they were on their cell phone time instead of on the ship time. Boy, have you got to be on top of that. Uh, you've got to be sure when you leave the cruise, what time is it according to the cruise ship? Forget what the local time of day is. What's the cruise ship time? It should be the same. Usually it's coordinated. But if your cell phone thinks you're somewhere else, you could really get yourself into trouble and uh, be mindful of that. If you're not wearing a wristwatch and you can't set it, you better watch your watch your time. Um, Charles Jordan says so. So if you want to travel, if you oh if you want travel insurance, which is the best, which is the best to get? Uh, I haven't researched this topic yet, uh, Charles. I, I think I'm going to, but I don't know if it'll be. You know, I want to research it, and I would. I'm wondering if it's worthy of bringing to you guys because I don't know how boring this might be. <laughs> But then again, it, it, I think it'll be highly informative. And I think what I'm going to do is sort of check out what the most popular travel insurance is out there. And I'll, I'll try to make my point. Some of, some of the viewers here may just chip in with some of their favorite companies. I would check, though, just off the top of my head, check with your, um, your home insurance, like your own insurance provider. If you have life insurance, you have home insurance, car insurance with an agent. Contact your favorite insurance agent and say, hey, Charlie, Deborah, you know, Brenda, listen, uh, you know, wife and I, the kids, we're thinking of going on a cruise. Do you provide any kind of override, like rider for travel insurance? Is there anything like that? Check your credit cards. If you've got a platinum uh, gold card through Citibank or, you know, the American Miles Advantage card, they may have travel insurance built into the card. You got to check, though, the provisions and you got to check the deductions and the limitations. But you may well have in your wallet already 
uh, with credit cards, the kind of coverage you actually need and you don't have to pay extra for. Uh, but then again, it doesn't hurt to uh, you know check with your insurance broker. Find out from them because if you've got an insurance broker as your insurance agent and you say to them, I'm thinking of taking, a, we're thinking of taking a three week trip, you know, combination Orlando, and then we're going to go on a cruise together and this kind of thing with the kids or just my wife and I, um, let the agent come back to you and say, okay, I've got the computer in the office. I'll enter the, you know, what you need. And they, they may come back to you with an offer you can't believe. Uh, they, they might say for an extra so much a year, I can throw this rider on top of your insurance policy with us, or I can sell you a separate travel policy and it covers way more than the credit card will ever cover, way more than you think you're getting through AMA or through other entities or, 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 or the AAA, uh, sorry, the Automobile Association. Um, and and you'll, you may be shocked at, at, at how good this is. So um, this is just the top, off the top of this guy's bald head and uh, we'll have to go from there. Uh, eventually I'll get more info on this. Uh, good question. Mark lost travel. The ship's time is the ship's time. Remember that? Oh, oh yeah. Elizabeth is saying, uh, uh, with this being said, I live in the Colorado, Colorado oh, sorry, I live in the Orlando area, so I can pack as much as I really want because we do not fly. Oh, yeah. If you're driving to the ship, you don't have to fly down to the port city or the area. Oh, have you got it made? Have you ever got it made? I I'll tell you, my wife and I, we uh, were going on our first cruise uh, out of San Diego. We flew down with a couple of really old suitcases. We had some junkers. <laughs> We'd never been on a cruise before. And we had a couple of garbage suitcases at home. And I said to my wife, let's take those. So she looked at me like I was out of my mind, out of my mind. She said, why don't we go and buy some? I said, no, 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 here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go down to San Diego. We're gonna fly down there anyway. Uh, as it turned out, we flew to LA, we rented a car and we drove to San Diego. We had not had a day or two. And I said, we're going to go to a Walmart or a Costco in the USA. And we're going to replace our suitcases with new suitcases. And uh, we're going to dump our old ones in the trash. We're going to just give them up, throw them in a dumpster. And that's exactly what we did. We, when we went down with medium-sized suitcases, which we stuffed to the max. And we had a couple of carry-ons stuffed to the max. Then we went down, bought two larger ones to replace the two garbage ones. And now we had room for the wine, the pop, and all the other stuff we were buying down there. She bought herself a bathing suit in the United States because where, where are you going to find a bathing suit in the middle of February in Calgary when it's 20 below? You buy the bathing suit in LA or in San Diego. And so we were, we were paying US sale prices because we were at a big retailer and we replaced and upgraded our stuff. And of course, we bought the wine on ch at cheap pricing. We bought the cola cheap. Paid for the suitcases right there, just the savings on that stuff. And then we got to take them home as wonderful souvenirs. <laughs> we used them for a couple of years. So that's an idea. Uh, what do we got here? Uh, <laughs> Lost Traveler. <laughs> what do we got here? Uh, just checking whether Mark the Lost Traveler. Ship's time's a ship time. Uh, or Jack Daniels or your gums. I'm not sure what you mean by that. Uh, spilling off to much Jack. All oh, will always carry a watch. Yes, we'll carry a watch, Mark. You betcha. Um, <laughs> Angela, I, I like Amex travel insurance. Very good. Martha Lost Traveler is saying USAA. Uh, and Mark Lost Traveler is saying, but no insurance if you push your loud neighbor over. <laughs> yeah, if they figure that one out, you're not getting any insurance money. <laughs> uh, Teresa saying travel guard. Okay. Um, Elizabeth was saying, bring, uh, bring a Yeti or a travel cup. The cups they give you are so small. Uh, you can bring your own Yeti and have it cold all day by the pool with water or tea. Very good point. Uh, Bobo was saying Jack Dam. <laughs> Doreen uh, was saying, um, is Travel Guard Insurance uh, uh, available in Canada, Teresa? is kind of curious. Mark is as replying, hey, Teresa, only 24 days till we're on the Norwegian getaway. Uh, Bob O is saying Jack Daniels works every time, and even if it doesn't, you don't care. You don't care. Excuse me. Right there. Drop my notes. <laughs> yes, it's a, it's a medication, really. It's a medication, uh, a numbing agent, as we say. Um, Teresa saying yes, it is. Uh, it's what my sister and I use uh, for that insurance question. Mark lost traveler. Laugh out loud, Bob. Richard Kormaski, I am not a phone plan salesman, but T-Mobile was great. Free text and internet in Europe, 40 days, and only 10 cents a minute to call back to the States. Saved a bundle and had great service. Yeah, that's a great deal. 
that is something that um, newbies and veterans should know or should investigate. If you are leaving your home country, like Canada, or you're leaving the U.S. taking a Caribbean cruise, you're going international as far as your, your phone company is concerned, and they're rubbing their hands, praying you don't call them, <laughs> praying that you'll call on the phone from uh, Jamaica back to the U.S. without having called them first for a deal. No, no. Contact your provider, T-Mobile, uh, whoever you're using in the States, up in Canada, you call your Canadian provider. You might be able to either buy a separate package for so much, a flat rate that gives you unlimited texting or really cheap phone call rates. And that way you can take your cell phone with you confidently in Mexico, in Jamaica, Cayman Islands, um, uh, San Martin, or in Europe, uh, wherever you're headed. And you can stay in touch email wise, uh, texting and phone call. Okay. Very good point. That is a, a real important one because horror stories come out every year in the media. So-and-so took their phone on a holiday to Jamaica, forgot the fact that they had it on roaming and they got an $8,000 phone bill when they got back. Horror stories. Uh, governments are outlawing that practice bit by bit, but you, you don't want to be the one fighting that bill. So yeah, check with your provider on that one. Good point there, Charles. I love that. Uh, Doreen is saying, yeah, thanks for the info. Uh, Elizabeth, uh, Bob, Jack Daniels cures almost everything. <laughs> Ter <laughs> Teresa is saying, you're welcome, Doreen. Uh, Elizabeth, uh, my biggest thing, put your phone in the safe. Unless you have an emergency at home, just don't worry about your phone. And uh, I couldn't agree more. Um, if you can get away from that little monster, shut the damn thing off. You've told everybody you're going on a cruise. You told them you'd get back to them at the end of the cruise. Shut it off. Leave it in the vault. Don't use it. Um, it's true, however, if you're, say, in San Juan, Old Town, there's a Starbucks a couple blocks away from the pier. Free internet. So, you know, you can take your phone with you and go on Wi-Fi mode and uh, do some texting or some, you know, emailing and that kind of thing if you want. Uh, but, uh, you know, if you can avoid it for a week, more power to you. It's a great escape, especially if the boss knows. Uh, if the boss feels that the boss can get at you for whatever reason while you're on a holiday, the boss will get at you. So keep that phone shut off. Keep it in the vault and tell the boss I'll see when I get back, if at all possible. Uh, Wes is saying that T-Mobile offered the same plan in the Caribbean. Good point, Wes. Arnold, uh, Thomas Arnold's here. Thomas, big bear check -in. How you doing, buddy? Uh, welcome back. Um, uh, we're talking about packing ideas and cruise tip ideas as usual. Uh, Teresa is saying, I can't wait, Mark, the last, tra last traveler. I'm on Royal Caribbean, eight-day adventure of the seas the week before that cruise. Well, she's got you over a barrel. She's going on one cruise, then she's going to meet you on another cruise. What's wrong with you, Mark? Get, get your act together. you got to book some cruises, man. you got to keep up with this girl. That's awesome. <laughs> she's making me real jealous, let me tell you. Fantastic. Way to go. Uh, Angela is saying, I use WhatsApp, free Wi-Fi calling and text and video calling. I do too. Yes, WhatsApp. Uh, excellent uh, feature. You can you can shoot video and send video free uh, over over to your friends back home. It's fantastic. You're sitting in a Starbucks and you got the Wi-Fi there. You got WhatsApp. You can t talk. You can you can FaceTime literally, and you can do video and you can send photos. It's fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. Elizabeth is saying an Uber is cheaper than a taxi, especially if you have a family of four. Uh, I would agree with that, generally speaking, although Uber is not necessarily available everywhere we go, but uh, certainly in big cities, U.S., North America, for sure. Angela A., I use it, uh, I use it on the ship. Uh, she's saying that is WhatsApp. She's using WhatsApp on the ship with Wi-Fi. Yeah, good plan there. Great, great job. Mark the Lost Traveler. Yes, Teresa, we need to meet up on the ship. Uh, Teresa from McFarland saying for sure, yes, we will. Uh, yeah, these are some great tips, folks. Uh, I, I thank you so much for this. This is, I'm sure this is helping a lot of folks out there. Uh, Mark Lost Traveler, not so fast, T. Monday, I'm flying to Hawaii for a few days. Oh, I forgot. First class. <laughs> this is what we call tit for tat trap. I love this. Mark is going to Hawaii first class. Then he's going on the cruise. Teresa is going on two cruises back to back. Who's the winner here? I, I, I'm going to call it a tie. I think this is fantastic. Uh, uh, Mark has got a lot of us over the barrel because Mark is with American Airlines. <laughs> and he's getting the deals. <laughs> this is fantastic. Um, okay, Elizabeth's saying, this is kind of serious, but my daughter is um, autistic. If you have a family member that is noise sensitive, get the noise canceling headphones. Is That is brilliant. Uh, yeah, really smart. 
And boy, you know, can't we thank the folks who invented this feature, you know, in the last number of years? Um, this is this has just made life so much more bearable for so many people. Um, I know that even you know, even if you're taking a you know a lot of business trips, uh, you know, tra and air travel is part of your uh, existence, having these noise canceling headphones on business trips is also a saving grace. Uh, you know, it, th these are fantastic. That, that's a great tip. That's Elizabeth. That's great. Thanks for mentioning that. Um, Le Marquipu, uh, uh, uh Silvers is here. Th I recognize the name, and I hope I'm pronouncing it right. <laughs> LS. LS is here. Welcome back. Thanks for a seaside discussion the other day. Almost made a mistake. Booked a cruise. Chicago says hi. Chicago. I love it. Um, I'm getting subscribers out of Chicago. This is fantastic. Uh, yeah, this seaside thing. Um, we've been talking about this here uh, the last week now. And it's it. We're finding videos on YouTube. Uh, we're finding stories now in in uh, travel blogs uh, and other spots talking about the problems of MSC Seaside. The first few cruises, uh, plumbing problems. This funky smell. This sewage smell. This backing up of toilets. Backing up of sewage coming inside um, the shower stall. Inside suites. Uh, we're hearing just all kinds of issues. I think it's mechanical plumbing and others, and um, you know they're trying to fix it. You know they got to be. They're they're they the the mechanics on board are are probably talking to the builders at the ship line. You know back at the factory where they're building it and where they're building the next one, <laughs> and they're going over what the issues are. We're having these problems at sea with four thousand passengers. We've overloaded the system and we've got problems, and I'm sure they're desperately trying to get to it. But how long will it be until we're sure? That they're not going to have the problem anymore. Uh, we don't. We don't know. So the seaside is really uh, uh, catching the attention of a lot of us. Um, and uh, I'm, you know, thinking, oh, if I got, to, if I was going to go on the seaside, I'd love to go on the ship. Uh, new design, new look, new everything. But I'm thinking April, May uh, might be, you know, safer than going February. Uh, you know, just give them a little more time to figure it out, right? Uh, so yeah, um, uh, Silver's welcome. Uh, LS, welcome to the discussion, and thanks for mentioning that, and thanks for joining the group. Uh, Mark is saying very true, Elizabeth. I have the Bose one, so sweet. I'm talking about the noise canceling headphones. Uh, I'll, okay, Elizabeth is saying also let mom and dads know on the carnival if you put your child in kids camp, they will give you a cell phone if requested. That's pretty smart. That's really smart. Um, that is cool uh, to keep the you know allow you to be in touch with the kids and the counselors on the on the thing. That's fantastic. Great peace of mind. Uh, Alice F is here, new viewer here in Seattle. Just booked on the PCL Caribbean Princess for May. Princess Cruise Line Caribbean Princess for May. Um, Alice, welcome, Seattle. We're not that far away. I'm in Creston. Uh, I'm three miles north of the Idaho border, just north of Coeur d'Alene by about two hours. You're kind of well. You're over here. <laughs> Fantastic. Welcome aboard and uh, welcome for joining us. We're talking about cruises and packing for cruises, tips, uh, what you should take on a cruise and, and, and little things to think about when you're on a cruise. Uh, uh, there's some really good tips coming here on this live chat. This is fantastic. Uh, Alice, this is great that you're here. Uh, Cornelius, uh, Cornelius is here. Hey, just checking in to offer support. All the best. Nice community you have. Thanks, Cornelius. Uh, thanks so much. Uh, Coroli Corolius. I'll, I'll get that right. Sorry. Um, thanks for subscribing and uh, and watching. It's great to have you. Uh, way to go! Uh, yeah, we're having a good time here. The, the 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 crew here is fantastic, and this audience is growing uh, every day, and we're just having a blast. It's fantastic. Uh, I just want to double check a couple of points that I was making about what to take and what not to forget. <clears throat> Make sure you buy your motion sickness um, medication before you get to the cruise ship. Maybe in the town, the city that the, the ship is in. So in Fort Lauderdale, you know, the pharmacies all around the port in Fort Lauderdale, they got seasickness uh, stuff. So you can find the patches, you know, those little, those patches you put behind your ear, the Band-Aids, or, or the, uh, the Gravol or, or other remedies. Um, if you're going to buy any of that stuff, buy it on shore and bring it with you. Don't buy it on the ship. But if, you, if you have to, you have to, of course. Uh, but you won't get, you know, taken to the cleaners if you buy it on the, on the cruise ship. But it'll be cheaper if you buy it onshore. Okay. <coughs> Who else is here? Oh, Elizabeth is saying I'm really enjoying this. Thank you. Uh, Chevy and First is here. Hey, how you doing, Georgia? 
you're in Georgia. Hello, I'm late. Welcome to the welcome to the uh, towards the end of our show. Still got a little ways to go. Thanks for joining us. We got a whole bunch of folks in today. This is fantastic. Uh, yeah, this motion sickness uh, product, you know, whatever you need. Uh, some of us who've been talking about motion sickness over the last week or two, we talk about using uh, taking ginger uh, or drinking ginger ale. You can go into the medical room, you know, and the doctor, uh, the onboard physician, they can give you a shot. Uh, I have had a friend of mine who was on a cruise and he got really seasick. It, it, it really hit him. He was surprised at how much he was affected by it. And he went downstairs to see the doctor. And they gave him a shot, some kind of, and uh, within minutes, he said, I, I had no, I have no issues, not a, not no symptom whatsoever. And that was uh, something else, but I've heard that it can be pricey. So uh, when you feel, when you don't feel good, you'll pay anything. <laughs> so fair enough. Okay. Uh, who else is your Mark Lost Traveler saying, um, I don't get seasick, but I see people with the wristbands uh, called, called C-bands. Yeah, I'd be curious about that. I'm, I'm imagining is that um, sort of a, something that touches your skin and gives you kind of a uh, continual medication type uh, uh, thing? Is that what's going on? It goes into your circulation, I'm wondering. Elizabeth saying, we really enjoy the bracelets that you can buy. We get them at Walmart, and I guess they are pressure point bands. So that's interesting. Um, you know, there's, there's just all kinds of remedies out there. Um, I don't use anything myself. Uh, um, I, I I mentioned it before for for you regulars, you know. But for those of you who are new, I was on a situation on the Explorer of the Seas with Royal Caribbean. My wife and I boarded in New York. We were headed to the Caribbean for an eleven day cruise, and the first night was gorgeous, fantastic, uh, smooth sailing. Next morning, we woke up. We're in a blizzard. The blizzard heading north to New York and Boston. And we're heading south to the Caribbean. And the blizzard was moving up at 60, 65 miles an hour. We were moving at 25 miles an hour, 40-foot waves. It was terrible. And uh, the noise and the movement of this, the ship was monstrous, and yet we were still being moved around. I, I was not feeling well. I laid in my bed on my left side. And uh, 30 hours, I didn't, I didn't leave the room for like a day, full day, day and a half. And uh, I survived it. Um, it. It helped with my motion sickness. Uh, I didn't need any medication. Uh, I couldn't drink my favorite beverage, which, by the way, is uh, caffeine-free Diet Coke. Thank you, Coca-Cola. Um, I'm not sponsored yet. Uh, but I couldn't even drink this. I couldn't. I wouldn't be able to keep anything down. That's how bad it was. But uh, that's worked for me. Now, there were people on board that cruise who had those uh, those uh, little patches behind their ears. I'm sure some folks wore the wristbands. And then uh, others, uh, you know, had other medication. And others, I know, went downstairs to the medical room. Uh, but there's only so much the doctor, I guess, could do. There were 3,800 of us on the ship, um, and we all suffered terribly. Uh, and we all talked about it. That was the topic of discussion for the rest of the 11-day cruise. Um, you know, I was seeking out people who had cruised 10 times before, 20 times before. Have you ever been on it? That Have you ever been on a ship where it was this bad before? And everyone told me, nope, it's the worst I've ever had. It's the worst ever I've ever been on a ship for any kind of a rolling motion or whatever. It was a nasty bugger. But the rest of the ship was, the rest of the trip was great. Uh, but that one was bad. And then in the future, when I saw 20 foot waves, <laughs> I'd say 20 foot waves, those are children, those are, that's nothing. Those are toys. 45 foot waves in 100 mile an hour. Now we're talking a storm, but 20 foot wave, child's play. Um, what can I say? It, it worked out okay. Uh, what do we got here? Um, yeah, Mark is saying with these bands, some for some people it works, some people it doesn't. Alice is saying the wristbands work using pressure points, no medicine. Luckily, never had an issue with seasickness. Right on, Alice. Uh, Elizabeth is saying, I know that uh, this is not uh, picking uh, packing related, but if you do go to uh, Grand Cayman, the Stingray Island and the turtle excursion was so much fun. Yeah, Stingray, they call that Stingray City. And it's an outing for the day. Uh, it's like a, well, uh, you know, to quote Gilligan's Island, it's like a three-hour tour. Uh, you can you can book a charter yourself, uh, or you can book a charter through the cruise line. <clears throat> if you do it yourself on the internet, uh, you know, a couple of weeks before you go on the cruise, you can book your own private charter and be on a ship that might hold twenty people. If you do it through the cruise line, you might be on a on a catamaran that can hold one hundred and fifty people. You know, depends what what you want. The pricing might be the same though. Um, one might be more, one might be less, doesn't matter. But if you do the private charter, uh, you can get a three for one. Uh, and that's where you can go to three different spots uh, in the bay, in Grand Cayman there, West Bay. 
um, and you can be uh, you can be near the reef where they'll give you snorkel equipment, and you'll be floating above you know twenty foot high. It's twenty foot deep water, crystal clear, right to the you see right to the bottom. You see the reefs over there. You see the shore over here, like see the sandbar over here as the water line. You know the water level drops to about five feet, and you're over this twenty foot of open water. And you're seeing schools of tropical fish, and you've never seen colors like this before, other than in a pet store. But here you're seeing it live, and it's wild, and it's amazing. They'll take you into another spot called the garden, and you're floating in about 10, 12 feet of water, and there's vegetation all underneath you that's thriving with with fish and and just wildlife. It's incredible. And then you go to Stingray City, and that's where the water is, uh, oh, three to five feet deep, depending on the tide, the time of day. And you can stand there uh, or you can float, you know, in, in five feet of water if you want and just look down and snorkel with a snorkel mask on. And, um, and the folks that, that operate the, 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 the charter, they'll get off the ship with you. One of them will get off and they'll literally pick up a stingray for you to touch if you want. Because the stingray know that they're not there to get harmed at all. They're there to get fed. <laughs> These charter folks, they, they feed them on the side. <laughs> and that's why the stingrays love coming to see all the tourists because they equate a lot of people with food not on your leg <laughs> but from someone feeding them by hand later so just so you know uh came in a great 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 day i used to live there and uh you, you can do some really neat stuff for the day um what do we got here monica saying i've done that very fun thomas uh saying um uh, my first cruise got seasick and the cabin steward told me to take a cup of tea add honey and lemon it worked for me there you go uh, ginger is another one. Uh, they say um, so, some things are natural. Like some of these, some of these uh, cure alls are absolutely natural. They are they're they're not chemically induced at all. The bands pressure point. Who would have thought? I mean, who thinks of that? That's incredible. Uh, and then of course you've got the you know you got the more drastic uh, <laughs> the drastic ways of dealing with it. Hopefully we won't have to deal with it. Most of these modern cruise ships now, I mean the ones that are coming off the line today. My goodness, uh, the design that these things have are unbelievable. They have the stabilizers underneath, which are like fins sticking out the bottom of the ship. They're all computer operated and controlled. So mankind, you know, the, the human, human beings cannot control the ship's movement as fast as a computer can. And the computer system is linked in to the propellers, to the uh, stabilizers, <clears throat> the steering, everything. And uh, they're constantly adjusting the ship for minimal roll, pitch, angling, everything. Uh, it's it's absolutely fascinating. And uh, for those of us on a cruise ship, what we're experiencing today for discomfort is nothing compared to what it was like in the 50s, the 60s, and before. Because before the 50s, they didn't have stabilizers. And even then, when they had them, the stabilizers were just fixed. They, they didn't really move. They weren't retractable. They weren't really adjustable. That came later. But now it's all computer uh, done. The front of the sh cruise ship, you may notice, sometimes you'll see a picture of the front of the cruise ship and you'll see a bulb sticking out the front of the cruise ship, about 10 feet in front of the bow. That's, a, that's an extra um, uh, minimizer of, um, of, of wake and, and vibration. It breaks the water for the cruise ship itself, for the hull, makes it much more fuel efficient, much smoother to operate. The the advancements are incredible. Uh, so we're we're spoiled. Uh, we really are uh, uh, in a in a whole other world than from the 50s and 60s. Absolutely. So uh, yeah, uh, we got it. We got it good. But you know, <laughs> Mother Nature, she throws up some winds and some waves. We're gonna feel it eventually. I mean, it just it just has to happen. Uh, one other thing I was gonna mention was Ziploc bags, freezer size bags. You use those to keep your uh, toothpaste, your shampoos. And uh, your mouthwash, anything of liquid that can spill out, you put inside Ziploc bags where you zip them shut. Great idea. My wife wanted me to show you this little prop right here. This is for a wine bottle. It's sealed on the top. The wine bottle goes in here. And then you can either, you can literally take off this 3M seal and just fold it over like this, you know, and keep the wine in. My wife just literally just puts the bottle in and then she just closes it like that she wants to reuse this thing doesn't want to use it once she wants to use it multiple times this holds wine it's got an air uh, it's got little air pockets in here the kind that we like to snap you know when we're kids or adults and that adds extra protection um i like to put uh um i'll take wine bottles and just put my uh, athletic socks around them a couple pair on the top and the bottom 
and then I'll pack them right in the middle of our suitcase where our clothing is on top and below and beside the wine bottle, one per suitcase, and that'll protect the suitcase from getting, uh, or the, the wine bottle from getting hit, hit hard or sharply. Uh, there's at least a, a shock absorber around it. And we, I've never had a problem with it with that. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, Alice is saying, a zip, Ziploc bags, never leave home without them on a cruise. Yeah, they're, they're invaluable. Uh, I like using small sandwich size Ziploc bags. I'll grab 25 Q-tips and put them in that and then zip that closed. And I'll have that. I'll also take my favorite, um, my little flossy sticks, the little sticks with the toothpaste on one end, the little piece of floss on the other. I'll, I'll take 20 or 25 of those. I'll put those in the same Ziploc bag. And and they, that lies super flat, is out of the way, it takes up no space, but it's on my carry-on. And uh, I have it on with me at all times. Um, okay, Mark the Lost Traveler is saying, airline story time. <laughs> okay. Don't fly in on the day of your cruise. A group of people flying in Orlando missed their connecting flight in, or, in ORD Chicago, and the ship said, sorry, see you at the next port. Absolutely right. Uh, this, is, this is a serious thing, especially for connecting flights, international flights. Uh, if your cruise is leaving from Orlando, you know, Port Canaveral or, or, or Fort Lauderdale, Miami, Tampa, you think on the one hand, well, it's going to be nice and sunny and warm in, in Florida. The, the, you know, the airports won't be closed in Florida. You're right. They probably won't unless there's a severe thunder shower warning, which can happen, lightning and so on. But what can get you is it's not the arrival airport that you actually have to worry about. The one you got to really worry about is your departing uh, airport. Uh, and your connecting airport. And at times, and a lot of times, it's not the airport either. It's the aircraft mechanical issues. The connecting flight that you're supposed to connect on is an hour late from getting in from where it was coming from. You're supposed to connect in Chicago and it was coming up from Nashville. It's an hour late out of Nashville. They don't have another plane to put you on. It's that flight. So you're waiting an hour and then the flight arrives. Then they got to get the crew off, the passengers off, the baggage off. Then they got to get the baggage on, you on, the new crew on. It could be a two-hour, you know, you could be late two hours. You get to Miami, you're supposed to get to Miami at 1. Now you're getting in at 3.30. And the last shuttle for the cruise ship left at 3. Now you're scrambling to get a cab. You get a cab. You get out of my, you're in rush hour. It's Miami. And you're at the, you're at the pier, you know, at 4.30. They, they cut it, they've cut it off. You're done. The ship's sitting there. It's right there. Can't get on it because it takes time to put you on. So these can these are the horror stories that you can run into on same day departure, same day flight. I don't play that game. I don't play that Russian roulette game. I played it once where I flew in from uh, Phoenix to Los Angeles to catch an LA cruise. Uh, the thinking was we had an eight o'clock in the morning flight out of Phoenix. Uh, Southwest Airlines, they have a flight every 40 minutes to Los Angeles. And so did uh, um, American had flights. United had flights. There were flights to LA all day long. So I figured, well, it's a one flight deal. It's a one hour and 15 minute flight, if that, one hour. We miss our first flight for whatever reason. We'll get the next one, the next one. We were getting into LA at nine in the morning. We didn't have to be at the pier till we could be at the pier till three. So I had six hours of leeway. That was okay. Vegas to Los Angeles, yeah, you're going to be okay. But uh, Denver to, uh, to Miami not with a connector, even a direct flight, wouldn't do it. I wouldn't do it. Go in the day before. Because if you get there at midnight the day before, you are, you're leaving the next morning, you know, 10, 11, 12 o'clock. You at least got to the city that night at midnight. Your hotel has been reserved. Your room is waiting for you. You can crash and rest. The next morning you can get up, have your breakfast. Go to your local uh, uh, Publix grocery store or Walmart superstore or Costco, grab a cab, whatever, shop for what you need to take on the cruise, and you can make your cruise. Day before is the way to go. It'll, it'll save you in the long run. It'll pay for your hotel. The savings that you uh, have, buying your own wine and your own uh, drinks and some snacks, that'll pay for your hotel the night before, unless it's a real Ritz-Carlton. You know? Um, let me just double check here with some more messages. Uh, that was a great story, uh, Mark, on the airline. Elizabeth is saying, I'm upset that I can't buy the drink package because my husband doesn't drink. I kind of don't understand it. Yeah, that one, we talked about that yesterday. That's frustrating. Um, 
But I'll tell you, Elizabeth, when you get to the ship, when you get on board, you talk to those folks there, either at the bar, and that's where I'd recommend you do it. You talk to the folks who are selling drink packages, they may well make an exception for you. Uh, all is not lost yet, okay? You're, you're stuck right now, but when you get to the ship, let them let them find a way to accommodate you. Just give them a chance. Teresa is saying, yes, uh, family, you can take canned soda on Royal Caribbean. Uh, Pamela, okay, Teresa, didn't know. Uh, how should you pack them? Teresa says we pack them on our carry-on and we bring on uh, two 12-packs. Uh, you can do that. I personally take a 12-pack and shove one in my suitcase beside the bottle of wine. And then I put the other 12-pack in the other suitcase beside the bottle of wine. Um, uh, that's what I'll do. Um, let's see what we got here. Elizabeth saying you can bungee cord the 12-packs on top of your carry-on or you can just put them on in the carry-on. It's up to you. There's another another suggestion. You're going to do that. Teresa saying you're welcome. You can also bring to, on two bottles of wine. Pamela saying don't drink, but nice to know. Steve uh, Bartley saying we're going to we're going Denver to Miami four days early. Good plan. Good plan. You can never be too early in Miami. I mean, how can you be too early in Miami? That's fantastic. You'll have a great time, uh, Steve, and you can you can just relax. You're going to make your ship on time. You're not going to miss your ship. Great. Uh, uh, Mark Lost Traveler saying that's playing it safe, Steve. Yeah. <laughs> You know, Orlando, four days, five days early, go to Disney World, see Epcot Center, especially if you're traveling without the kids. Forget the kids. Mom and dad, go yourselves, go to Disney World, and see it for yourselves without the damn kids. You paid the price, you got them to school, college, whatever you did, or you left them with grandma and grandpa. <laughs> Go to Disney World and don't tell the kids. Just saying, a little piece of advice. Uh, Charles is saying, how not to act on an excursions boat tour. <laughs> there are the do's and don'ts of that, aren't there? Yeah, uh, man, oh man. Uh, yeah, there are excursions and then there are excursions. And I think we have stories. Uh, I'll, I'll be, I think we're going to bring that up on one of these upcoming videos. Um <laughs> Uh, Elizabeth says, wait, who gets to travel without the kids? <laughs> who, who, who? Uh, you know, you got to plan it out. Uh, you know, there are times where, uh, you know, mommy and daddy have to go on a business trip. And, uh, you know, kids can't, kids can't go to the business trip. What's a business trip? Oh, it's a trip to Florida. And uh, we've got to go to a convention. And, you know, you got to stay with grandma and grandpa. <laughs> and the trip, in reality, is four days Orlando, seven days Royal Caribbean, uh, you know, and mommy, daddy having a good time because they deserve it. Uh, there's that because the kids get the next trip because the, the kids always get trips. But I'm just saying, uh, you know, it's it's all on how you do it. Uh, <laughs> Mark Lost Traveler, Disney World will cost more than the cruise. You're right. You're absolutely right. Uh, don't doubt that. Mark Lost Traveler, I have no kids. Way to go, Mark. Teresa is saying, bring the grandparents. That's what we used to do. Yeah, you can. And the best way to bring the grandparents is if they're helping pay the tap. <laughs> and if you know, grandma and grandpa, there are grandma and grandpas out there, God bless them, that do want to help pay the tap because they know they know their 35 and 40 year old children and in laws are paying the mortgage, paying the car payments, paying more all these costs, all those children's fees. And they all need a break. And boy, uh, they, they are kicking in a couple of bucks. And they're saying to the uh, parents, you pay for yourselves, we'll pay for the kids. And uh, you also have built-in babysitters for those kids because grandma and grandpa are going to turn in earlier. Uh, the 35-year-old parents still want to dance a little bit maybe, see the show every night. Uh, so there's alone time for mom and dad. And then there's grandma and grandpa time for the kids. Yeah, great, great cruise. Great holiday. Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> Uh, Crash 3X is here. Hey, Crash, my number one is here. Welcome back. Elizabeth saying, Bruce, I'll bring I'll bring you. Ha ha. Yeah, well, you know. <laughs> uh, and I'll pay. Oh, Elizabeth, you're killing me. You're, you're, just, you're just killing me. Uh, that's fantastic. I tell you, I am looking forward to the day uh, when I have enough subscribers built up here because right now, as you folks know, I am putting everything I got into this channel, all my energies to build this thing up and get it going. Uh, and it is. It's coming. Um, but I've got to get this thing to three, 5,000 subscribers. And it's at that point where I can really say to a uh, cruise director or a cruise marketing expert over at Royal Caribbean or Carnival or Norwegian or wherever, uh, I can say something like, you know, I, I, I got the, uh, you know, I got about 5,000 views a day. I got 5,000 subscribers. Uh, 
200,000 views a month on my channel. And uh, I was kind of thinking of having a cruise, uh, like a meet and greet for my, uh, for my fans, for my, for my followers, for my, for my peeps here. Uh, we're kind of, you know, we're kind of talking about putting together a cruise and we're all get on there for a week. Uh, you got any ships go with some room on it. <laughs> and yeah, let's see what, uh, let's see what comes of it. Because right now with 200, 300 and 400 and, 87 subscribers, whatever the number is, 486. Uh, I really can't bother those guys right now. Uh, they're kind of going, yeah, yeah, come back when you're real. Well, we're, we're getting real. We're getting real fast, real, real fast. Uh, but, yeah, this fall, I'm thinking seriously, uh, there's a cruise coming up. And uh, as soon as I know, you'll know. And uh, there'll be more after that. So we'll see what we can do. should be a lot of fun. Uh, Richard saying, love you live. Uh, Mark Lost Traveler, one day all of us on a cruise. Teresa McFarland, that would be fun. Teresa Bream, 2020 group cruise. <laughs> I don't know about 2020. I, I, I kinda, I'm thinking 2018. 2018. I, I, I need a cruise now. <laughs> uh, theme cruise, we all wear the same shirt as Bruce. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I'll have merch by that. How about that? I, I'll do merch. Uh, that's a YouTube term uh, that we have as creators. Uh, I talk like a creator now. We have a term merchandise, and uh, that's where I'll have uh, Traveling with Bruce merch, a shirt with a logo on it, Traveling with Bruce, and uh, we'll offer those up, and uh, I'll, I'll get a little profit on each one that we get what you order. I'd love to do that. I need every income stream I can think of to do this. Uh, Karen Lipson, count me in. Uh, Bob always giving a thumbs up. We're, we're in. We're all there. I know it. I, I know it. Uh, there, there's no doubt in my mind. I see other YouTubers doing these meet and greets on cruise ships. And uh, I'm thinking, you know, this is very doable, and this would be a lot of fun. And, uh, you know, this could be done several times a year, no question about it. And, uh, you know, it's not like there aren't deals out there. I mean, it's not like we have to book a cruise that's a 1000 bucks a night. Not necessary at all. There are deals out there. And I know that there are cruise lines very interested in groups. Uh, you, bring, you bring them a group of uh, 150, 200 travelers, 100 cabins. Now we're talking. Uh, there's some oomph there, and uh, oh yeah, they'll they'll accommodate us, no question at all. Uh, that'd be fun. That would be a lot of fun. That's definitely in there. It's, I'm scheming. The wheels are turning. Uh, <laughs> I already have 2018. I can do 2019. Right on, Elizabeth. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> we'll make it work. Don't worry. If you don't get the first one, you'll get the second one, the third one. We'll figure it. Okay. <laughs> Excellent. I'm going to check my notes one last time to see if I've forgotten anything I wanted to mention on what to bring. Of course, sunscreen, obviously. Buy the sunscreen at home if you can or buy it in Orlando before you get to the cruise ship. Yes. Don't buy it in the hotel lobby in Orlando. Buy it at the ever, you know, the the uh, the uh, gr the uh, drugstore, Rite Aid or Publix or, you know, where you can get a price on it, right? Absolutely. Uh, Elizabeth, we can all meet at my house, air beds for all. <laughs> <laughs> Charles Jordan saying uh, about the only way we could go uh, would be to leave from Fort Canaveral and that's 500 miles from here uh, for Fort Canaveral. Well, you know, Charles, uh, I'm coming. Uh, if I'm coming down to Fort Canaveral, uh, I'm coming diagonally across the country from Spokane, Seattle to you. So I'm going to be moving about 3000 miles. I got you beat. <laughs> but if we book it early enough, I'm sure we can make it economical. Uh, uh, yeah, or the airport, 25 bucks, uh, uh, Mark the Lost Traveler is saying. Uh, we might have to hit Mark up for some friend passes on our American Airlines. <laughs> Mark, we're going to put you to work. Uh, maybe you can find us a deal. Uh, I like Port Canaveral, he says, 45 miles. Yeah, no kidding. Uh, definitely ha definitely handy, no doubt about that. Yeah, I've got, uh, I I've got cruises I want to do, on uh, ships I want to be on, and, uh, and uh, boy, I would love to do the meet and greets. That would be fantastic. I need to take footage on cruise ships as well. That way I have a whole bunch of footage for future videos. You betcha. That would be fabulous. Uh, Charles saying, good. You can pick us up. Laugh out loud. <laughs> It'll be a good time. Well, folks, I'm going to say I think this is going to do it. We're on an hour and 30 minutes into this one. It's been great. Uh, thanks for everybody joining us today. I think we've, uh, we've uh, you know, hit some really good view times here, and we've got some really good uh, suggestions here for packing tips. Uh, for those views, those viewers out there who are watching this video a year from now, three months from now, everything we talked about here is current. Uh, this is this is uh, an evergreen kind of video. The kind of these kinds of tips are good forever, and uh, you can't you can't beat this deal. Um, Mark, uh, Mark Lost Traveler saying, "Okay, Charles, I'll get a party bus." <laughs> oh wow, ship time goes fast. 
Yeah, Mark, this is the fastest hour, hour and a half there is. Uh, I can't believe how fast an hour goes by. The only uh, hour that's faster for me than doing this is when I get a one hour massage. That That's the fastest hour known to man. Um, uh, I, I had a masseuse in Calgary. I used to get a one and a half hour massage once a week. It's the fastest 90 minutes I ever had. Unbelievable uh, with a little bit of uh, acupuncture and the massage. Oh, man, feel like a million bucks. And uh, a week later, I'd need another one. <laughs> but boy, that's a fast 90 minutes. This is incredibly uh, quick. I, I'm, I'm just amazed. I do find, though, that after about a half an hour from now, after I get this video posted, uh, I collapsed. <laughs> I'm out of gas. I'm tired. <laughs> I need a rest, and I get one. And then I start scheming. What am I going to do tomorrow? I got, I got to talk about something. What am I, what am I going to talk about tomorrow? We talk about everything. I have no idea what I'm going to talk about tomorrow. But then I remember, you guys do a lot of talking. I will have lots to talk about tomorrow. So I'm going to say you, say good night to you guys now. Thank you for all for watching. Uh, it's been great. This is Bruce with Traveling with Bruce saying goodbye. I'll see you tomorrow at 5 o'clock Eastern. Tomorrow is Friday, and then we'll do it again on Saturday at 2 p.m. Eastern. Have a good night. This is Bruce with Traveling with Bruce saying see you later. Bye-bye, guys.